These mysterious lands which seem to rise out of the clouds are the highlands, situated in the east of the island of New Guinea to the north of Australia. The western half of the island is Ilian Java, part of Indonesia, and this, the eastern half, is Papua New Guinea. The country includes over 1,400 islands, both large and small. In PMG, as this country is popularly known, there are around a thousand distinct ethnic groups speaking over 800 different languages. The fierce nature of these tribes, the practice of cannibalism and the fact that some groups cut off the heads of their enemies made this island a fearful place, which travelers tried to avoid. Sailors who did find themselves sailing close to these coasts told of how the natives had attacked them from the cliffs, leaving the decks of their ships covered in arrows and spears and crew members wounded. New Guinea was a remote place that no one dared approach, and so it remained unexplored for many years. In fact, until the start of the 19th century, when the English and the Germans took possession of some coastal areas, New Guinea did not even appear on maps of the world. there was no contact with the natives until the 20th century, 1930 to be precise, when Michael Leahy and Michael Dyer, searching for gold, climbed the eastern flanks and discovered a million people belonging to over 400 different tribes. This region is very rugged, with a series of mountains reaching heights of up to 4,000 meters and forming numerous valleys of dense vegetation, where the different ethnic groups live practically isolated from each other. The majority of the villages are inhabited by just one family or a single clan. The houses are made of bamboo with roofs of palm leaf. Yam, juca, maize and sweet potatoes make up their daily diet. The main source of protein comes from the pigs, which they take great care of. They live in an enclosure joined to the house and are the sign of their wealth. <laughs> the house is divided into different rooms, compartments separated by walls of woven bamboo. Another source of protein is fish, which they catch in the many rivers in the region.
Without a doubt, the rough highland terrain and the extremely warlike nature of these tribes, always in conflict with their neighbors, have contributed to the great ethnic variety we still find today. Each group decorates their bodies in different ways, specific, characteristic colors and designs. They paint themselves for many different ceremonies, but perhaps the most typical is the Sing Sing, a ceremony at which they dance and sing. Sing Sings are organized to celebrate many different things, though some take place on specific days each year, and for these many different tribes come together, arriving from even the most remote villages. Using the same colors, each one paints his face with his own design, almost always inherited from his ancestors, as are their headdresses, made from bird of paradise feathers. The bird of paradise is now a protected species and can only be hunted with bow and arrow before the Sing Sing. From the time the Spanish sailors took the feathers back to Europe in the 16th century, trade in these feathers was indiscriminate. All over the world, they were greatly prized as decoration in theater shows. The Highlander peoples are proud and maintain their customs and traditions. Despite the daily impact of Western influence, they never miss an opportunity to show off their feathers. One of the most numerous and most singular groups in the highlands are the Huli. They live in the western highlands around the city of Tari. Their first contact with white men on Australian patrol near the river Tagali was in 1935. They normally go bare-chested. They have belts made of fibers and hanging from them there is always a hungoya, a knife made from the tibia bone of the cassowary a flightless bird slightly smaller than the ostrich and which is very common in PNG. In their rituals, they paint their faces with red and yellow clay and vegetable dyes. At the initiation ceremony, a hole is drilled through the nose into which they will later insert pig's teeth, feathers or small pieces of wood. Hanging from the back of their necks, the powerful hornbill beak symbolizes strength and courage in battle. Their large three-peaked hats are made with their own hair and decorated with flowers and cassowary feathers. The geography of the highlands and the constant battles between the different groups make communication very difficult. At the moment, access to the western region is impossible due to the wars among the tribes, which cause 5,000 deaths a year. But it has always been like this. Every village, every settlement has studied the best way to defend itself from neighboring clans or tribes. They have made the best bows, more effective spears, heavier, more solid axes and clubs, shields with which to protect themselves, systems of defense and attack, traps and ambushes. 